All right, so in this lesson, we're going to cover biased and unbiased samples. All right, if you don't know what that means yet, don't worry about it. Uh, in this first part, let's look at unbiased samples, though. Uh, so an unbiased sample is just where everything is at random, okay? If you see this word random, chances are it's unbiased, okay? It means that we're not looking for anyone specifically. We're just going to find some people, and we're going to survey them. We're going to have them test out a product or something to that nature, okay? Uh, we're not looking, again, It's we don't care what they answer or how they answer. We just want them to answer uh, a survey or to test a product, okay? So this first kind is a simple random sample. So what would happen in this is that, uh, let's say in this circle is a group of people, okay? And we say we're going to choose, right? So there's all these people in here. We're going to choose from these people uh, to take a survey or maybe they're going to test a product, all right? So we're, we're not going to say anything other than we're just going to test these people, okay? And uh, any one of them can be chosen at any time. It can be done randomly. Uh, that random, uh, choosing them randomly can be done with some type of electronic device. Maybe you use any, mini, mighty, mo, but again, you're not looking for anyone specifically. Maybe they draw numbers out of a hat, something like that, okay? And you can see in this example, each student's name is written on a piece of paper. You put them in a bowl, and then you pick without looking. Okay, again, that would be a very random way to select people. Systematic random sampling is where you're taking uh, every certain number of people. So uh, let's say that you have these people in a line right here like this. And you were to say, I'm going to take every tenth person okay so now you're going to take uh, whatever 10 is alright so you're gonna take this guy and then you're gonna take this guy and so forth and sometimes that's that's done with the list so maybe what you'll have is a piece of paper like this and on that piece of paper you'll have a list of people and you'll say, all right, we're going to survey every other person. So this person gets surveyed, this person gets surveyed, this person, and so forth. Okay, maybe they're numbered even. You say, we're, we'll just survey all the evens. That is a systematic random sample. So you have these two types. And again, they're very random. They're unbiased. You've got a simple random sample. You're just choosing people, choosing people from a group. System random sample, systematic random sample rather, is where you're taking every other person, every third person, every fourth person, fifth person, or so forth, okay? All right, these are biased types of samples, okay? So, again, these ones would not be, these would be, this is a way that you choose people to take a survey, but you want them to answer in a very specific way. Or maybe you didn't know that they would answer a very specific way. Uh, so you thought it was unbiased, and then it became biased, okay? Uh, for example, if you went to a Utah Jazz game, and you were to ask them each, uh, or you, maybe you were to ask every 10th person that walks in the door, what, what is your favorite NBA team? Well, the chances are you're going to get a lot of Jazz fans there, okay? So that as it turns out, is also a convenient sample because they're already there. They're going to answer a very specific way, and they can be easily accessed. When you ask them what their favorite basketball team is, they're very likely to tell you that it is the Jazz. Okay? They'd be happy to answer that question as well. A voluntary response, uh, sometimes you'll hear this on a radio show, for example. Uh, maybe there's someone running for mayor and they're on a talk show that uh, agrees with their political agenda and they'll say please go to our website and fill out a response uh, fill out a survey that that talks about our candidate here well yeah people that go to that are either going to be very highly against it or for it okay so again you're finding a lot of people not 
See, if, if you're not really committed to that political party, what difference does it make to you to go fill out a survey? Okay, and again, that's with politics. It works the same way with businesses, um, right? You'll, you'll see this at Walmart or McDonald's as well. You'll get your receipt. Uh, please go to our website and fill out this survey for your chance to win $5,000. Okay, that's a voluntary response sample. But since they got it from Walmart, okay, you're probably not going to fill that thing out unless you're really, really happy with your service. Or maybe you really, really hated it. Okay, so that would be a voluntary response sample. And they've given a couple examples there in the boxes. Okay, so let's determine whether this conclusion is valid. Right? We'll justify our answer and we'll tell what type of uh, survey was done here. A random sample. Bam. Done. It's random. This is a valid sample. A random sample of students at a middle school shows that 10 students prefer listening to rock, 15 students prefer listening to hip-hop, and 25 students prefer no music while they exercise. It can be concluded that half the students prefer no music while they exercise. This is valid. Again, it's the big idea that you're looking for here was the word random. Okay, and we mentioned that before. If it says anything about how random it is, chances are that it is valid. Okay. And finally, this is a simple random sample because, again, they didn't take any specific number of students walking in the door, like every 10th student. They just took a random sample of people and asked them a question. All right, a magazine asks its readers to complete and return a questionnaire about popular television actors. The majority of those who replied liked one actor the most. So the magazine decides to write more articles about the actor. All right, this is a voluntary response sample because, again, they what, they, what have they done here? They've asked the readers, okay, so it's voluntary. They don't have to do it. Um, they weren't pulled aside. It's not random because who are they taking these people from? They're readers. It's their readers, okay? And they're asking them to complete a survey or a questionnaire about television actors. Okay, it's very likely that this magazine has something to do with entertainment. So since these people are reading about entertainment, chances are they're very happy about uh, responding to a questionnaire about entertainment, which in this case is our television actors and of course uh, maybe they they talk more about this one actor or not but uh, they really like this one actor so yes chances are they will write more articles about that actor that's good business right there find out what your people what your clientele want to know and then write more about it okay uh, so also this one would be not valid because it is bias. Not valid. There we go. All right. The customers of a music store are surveyed to determine their favorite leisure time activity. Okay, again, what are we looking at here? This is a music store. They sell music. They're surveying people at the store. They're customers of a music store they're surveyed to determine their favorite leisure time activity well people at a music store what do you what would you expect them to do in their leisure time or their free time hey, think about that the results are shown in this graph right here the store manager concludes that most people prefer to listen to music in their leisure time okay so what type of sample is this well, it's, uh, it didn't say that they were asking people to. Uh, it says that they took the customers from the music store and then uh, surveyed them. Okay, So this one, as it turns out, is convenience sample, which is a type of biased sample as well. So this one would be invalid.
Okay, or not valid if you want. Okay, because look at this graph right here. See this graph? There's a huge number of people, 85% of people, would rather listen to music than play sports or do something else. Like, of course, of course people in a music store are going to say that they like to listen to music. So this one would be invalid. Alright, so here's another example. The student council advisor asked every 10th student in the lunch line how they preferred to be contact, contacted with school news. The results are shown in the table. It's just a random sample. If yes, suppose there are 684 students at the school. How many can be expected to prefer email? So let's look at the first part of this. Uh, is this a random sample? Well, let's look. Uh, they asked every 10th student. Sorry. Every 10th student in the lunch line. Okay, so while they are in the lunch line, there's no way we can tell uh, what grade these students are in, uh, if they're male or female, what color their hair is, what type of sneakers they like, or even what type of electronics they have. Uh, all we know is that it's every 10th student, which makes this a, yes, this would be a random sample. Okay, this is a systematic random sample and again it's systematic because they took every tenth student in the lunch line so the results are shown on the table yeah we did that it is random sample suppose there are 684 students in the school alright so you remember from this that uh, this is going to give us a proportion alright so originally uh, how many students were there total? Well, let's go and figure that out. Okay, so 16 plus 12 plus 5 plus 3, and it looks like that would be 36. Okay. All right. Now that we're ready, now that we have that, we're ready to set up our proportion. So there were 36 total students that were asked, and it looks like 16 of them preferred email. So we don't know how many prefer email, but we know it's out of 684 students, okay? So hopefully you remember how to do this back when we were solving proportions in Chapter 1. From here, all I'm going to do is use the fishy method. So I've got 684 times 16 divided by 36 well, equals x. And it looks like x would be... the 304 students who would prefer to receive uh, to be contacted with the school news by email okay so this is our answer right here all right let's look at a a radio station asks its listeners to indicate their preference for one of two candidates in an upcoming election. 72% of listeners who responded preferred a candidate A. So the radio station announced that candidate A would win the election. Is this conclusion valid? No, it is not. Okay, this is not random by any means. This one is a voluntary response sample because... Who are they asking here? They're asking its listeners to indicate their preference for one of two candidates. Okay, so, uh, and again, you'll hear these all the time on the radio. Uh, you know, who is your favorite author? Who is your favorite artist? Who is your favorite candidate? And so forth. Okay, so this is not a valid, not valid. And the reason is, is because... It's a voluntary response sample. One thing you want to consider here is uh, the radio station, since they're talking to, uh, uh, they're asking about some type of election here. It's probably some type of political radio station. And of course, people who listen to those are usually very favorable to them, uh, though sometimes you'll get some people who oppose them very, very badly uh, to listen to their radio shows, okay? Um, so you would expect 
a huge number of people to respond positively, in this case 72%, to a specific candidate. Uh, and then the rest would respond negatively or probably don't care about uh, who wins, okay? So you can see why that would be a, a not valid or an invalid conclusion because uh, many of those people were already very likely to vote for one specific way.